Welcome to another edition of Politics Done Right. We're coming to you live from Netroots Nation 2022. We are the progressive folks that are going to get 2022. One, I'm here with Yvette Simpson, the Presidente of, what again? Democracy, Democracy for, for America. America. And Christopher Scott, who is the? Chief Political Officer of Democracy for America. Well, look, we're going to have some fun today because, you know, everybody's talking about us not winning uh, 2022. They are all in the doldrums because we're not going to do it. The fact of the matter is, if we have folks like you guys leading the charge, mm -hmm. Guess who's going to keep the house in 2022? Us. Absolutely. All right, we're well, doing look. it. Uh, absolutely. Anyway, Yvette, talk to me. Why, why, is, why do we have uh, this perception that things always have to be the same, that history always has to repeat itself? Because that's all people know, you know, but the reality is, is a lot has changed. You know, when I'm on the panel and folks are saying back in 1992, well, I wasn't even registered to vote in 1992. <laughs> You're talking about Clinton's first campaign. There's a whole new electorate that has not even been considered. So we're engaging those folks who were maybe not registered to vote in 1992 who might be 45, 50 years old. Uh, and we're talking about engaging a new generation of folks who are really upset with the status quo. And they are motivated and they're gonna show up. And I actually love that they're not capturing those people because then that's where we get our sneak attack, right? Mm -hmm. Like they're saying likely voters, but they don't see the folks who we're talking to who are gonna show up and overwhelm them. Yvette, that is the best answer I could have <laughs> ever gotten. Now, let, me, let me tell you why, let me tell you why. Last week I did a program that I said the likely voter model is wrong. Oh, see, we're on the same okay, page. we're on the same page. Same now, vibration. Christopher, talk to me. I mean, you you got a lot of work to do, my yeah. friend. You know, so tell us a little bit about. I, I should have asked Yvette this, but you are you are. Tell us a little bit about DFA first, how it got started, and then a little bit about what you do. So I think we are the longest standing organization to come out of a failed presidential campaign. But when you look at the power that uh, Governor Dean harvested into creating DFA, and now look at us 18 years later, uh, still powering the progressive movement. And I think the greatest part about DFA right now is we're ushering in the next era of the new American majority candidates and those likely voters that people don't want to consider as the likely voters. So when you look at a DFA candidate, you're looking at an Ayanna Presley, you're looking at a Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, you're looking at a Delia Ramirez this year. Unfortunately, we lost Marie Newman, but we are the ones that are taking the faces all across the spectrum, 50 state strategy, and making sure that we use a people powered approach to make sure that we're riding the ship for democracy right now. And what I love is you're even doing some great work in Texas. We yeah. are. We got I two mean, amazing new candidates. I mean, you have down two great candidates yes. in Texas, both of which, which I know. And I, I mean, it's great to see the work that's being done. If yeah. it, how are we going to put this through? that others can actually see that this isn't just blind impassionment, but this is actually, we're looking at the real numbers. It's right. not, this isn't imaginary. We it, show it, our receipts. I mean, this month alone, DFA has won 14 out of 16 races. Mm -hmm. On the year, we've won 68 out of 94 races in a year where there's so much dark money mm -hmm. that is coming against our candidates, millions and millions of dollars. What we know is that you win what you organize for. And we're continuing to organize folks that folks are not seeing, and we're winning the sneak attack. I mean, Greg Kazar yes. in Texas. Take Texas, man. A brand yes. new seat, meaning we, have a, we have a plus one in the in house. Texas, That's a yes. new seat. Yes. Jasmine, her amazing campaign to replace what, someone the, who the was an establishment. The, the, yeah, yeah. The teen, yes. and we, that's a progressive pickup. A young, right. new black woman yes. representing in Texas. That's how we win. They don't see that coming, and that's how we increase our ranks. You told Chris Christie last week something that was in, I think it was mm -hmm. Chris that you told last week. You looked at him and he said, yeah, if Democrats keep doing what they're doing today yeah you're right we're gonna we're lose, lose in 2022 but if we li really pick up the mantle and move with it mm -hmm. how can we lose that's right we gotta be on offense christopher how can we lose we can't we can't lose that's the thing everybody I think so much of the media wanted to write this election off at the start of the year. And when you're looking at the momentum that is happening, you're looking at what happened in Kansas a few weeks ago with Wanna Democrats that. Yes. closing that enthusiasm gap and saying, no, like we still want these protections. We still want these freedoms. Mm -hmm. I think you're starting to see 
uh, base of the Democratic Party start to wake up, realize we have too much at stake in this election, and they're ready, they're motivated, and they're going to get out there and deliver. I, I'm going to tell you guys something, and I want to hear both of your opinions about this. Everybody has been praising uh, Manchin. Okay, Manchin mm. came through. Manchin came through with this. And my thing is, like, Manchin just know how to read. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> uh, in other words, he read the tea leaves yeah. and realized that he's, in my opinion, that is, that he's going to be he'll be irrelevant because of what the tea leaves are saying. Your thoughts on he that? He also got a deal, right? So yeah. as part of his negotiation, we've got expansion of uh, offshore drilling. Right. Uh, more digging for oil. I mean, he, he negotiated that to get the win for the companies that are paying his pocket. <laughs> right. But he knew, right, he couldn't stand still right. with wildfires and floods and what happened in the U.K. Climate is the issue. Right. And what he did was he said, well, now i got to get on the bandwagon. How can I get a couple bucks for the folks who are powering me up? And let me ask you something, though. Do you think he really is going to get a couple? Because my, my thought is this. Yeah, he, he fulfilled his mission to the oil companies. But are those oil companies really going to see, let me invest in something when the momentum is going towards green energy? Are they really going to get the results out of that bill? You know, I don't think so. And that's I the don't challenge. Either, yeah. I mean, that's why I said, you know, we've talked about the IRA and what the impact is going to be. Yes, it's the most yeah. significant investment in climate. Right. At a time where we need twice that much. Right. Like now, you know, now that we've got a, we're in a situation that's dire, you're going to spend some money. We need twice as much. That's like saying, oh, we're at 725. Let's go to 825. Right. That's the most we've ever paid in minimum wage. Right. Not in a year when we need $25 an hour. Right. So, you know, we know that this is a small incremental change. But it's a change. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? When Shell Oil is the first to tweet that they like the IRA, we doing something wrong. When an oil yeah. company is saying we like this deal, mm -hmm. there's something but in it But there's for one them. thing that I'm very happy about. Yes. You didn't come out, y'all didn't come out and kill it. No, we you wouldn't have done have. that. We you wouldn't could have done have. that. We wouldn't have done that. We would have tried to make it better. Right. Progressives have been at the table with Biden trying to push this thing right. forward. And honestly, we wouldn't be at this point if it wasn't progressives. Because they were thought they were done with the infrastructure yeah. bill. Look at us, we got the infrastructure bill. We're like, no, you have to keep doing more. Our climate activists, all of our progressive organizations have been pushing for this to get done. So they're making Joe Manchin like he's a, you know, a savior. Mm -hmm. Uh, he's I, not. I'm, I don't think a, any not. of us in the progressive oh, media no. space is treating him I'm like I'm talking about here. everybody else. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Look okay. at Manchin. Wanna... He finally came around. No, he didn't. He it's saw a, he read it's those TVs. activists rowing up to his yacht <laughs> telling him to come off the boat. Absolutely. So, so anyway, <laughs> listen, we're almost done here. Tell me why didn't I ask you that you really wanted me to ask you. I want to talk about, again, Democrats are... I do believe that we will end up winning back the House. Mm -hmm. I think it'll be a closer margin than what we want. But again, you have to look at the momentum that progressive candidates have had in a lot of open primaries. We talked about Greg Kasar. We talked about uh, sending somebody like uh, Jasmine Crockett. Mm -hmm. I'm going to point out two more. Arizona one with Jevin Hodge. Yeah. Ohio 13 one. with oh, Amelia Sykes, good, the former right. minority leader. Mm -hmm. When you look at the pickups, a lot of these pickups and flips that Democrats are going to have this cycle, mm -hmm. they're coming from progressive candidates. So progressives not only are delivering on the agenda to help make the Biden administration look stronger, but we're also delivering on the battlefield to make sure that we protect the House and we will be the ones to save the Senate when you look at Mandela Barnes mm -hmm. uh, running for the Senate in West Virginia. Seven. And Didn't Sherry Bees we yes. running for like, oh. Senate in yeah. North yeah. Carolina. So you, when I talk about reading the tea leaves, right? Mm -hmm. Ask yourself a question. How comes they coalesced around Mandela? Ah, I wonder why. You know, it's amazing, right? Mm -hmm. Right. It's amazing when you actually want to win and hold something. Mm -hmm. You'll do you'll kinda bite your tongue and do what you need to mm -hmm. do. That's true. Absolutely. And that was one of the things we reflected on. It was all John Fetterman in Pennsylvania. Right. But no Mandela Barnes, who's right. also a lieutenant governor, exactly. who also is doing really, really Which well. Which also against an incumbent. And he could win the entire state, state. nationally, exactly. yep. which is what you have to prove, like our North Carolina. I don't yeah, know too Sherry much about Beasley. her. So, She's yeah. won statewide twice. Yeah. And times. that's what people forget. Yeah. Like you're talking about a candidate for the U.S. Senate that just lost her Supreme Court justice seat by 450 yes. odd so votes. Yes. When have you ever had a candidate in North Carolina, at least in recent history, right. that qualified come up to run for the U.S. Senate? So she's no stranger to this. She's exactly. not new to this. She's still true to this. We came really close in North yes. Carolina last time with a right. far less superior candidate. And, and, a, and a state that isn't all that purple. That's right. Right? Right. 
It is if you look at their likely voters, but when you look at all potential voters. There you go. Now there we've got momentum. Close me out of it. Um, you know, it's a big year and I'm really feeling good about it. If we organize, if we do the things that we need to do, if we focus on the galvanizing issue and stop with this wonky Washington stuff that nobody wants to hear about, if we focus on voters who need to be engaged, we win every time. It's going to be a good year. I, I got the feeling at the top of the year, I was like, this is going to feel like 2018. Yes, Remember 2018? Too. It was like that sneak attack. But you attack? remember they never thought about it they either. They didn't think, and then they got the squad, and yes. then they woke up. I yes. think it's going to be that year, and we need to keep our eyes on next week. Maxwell Frost in Florida needs all the support that he can get. I need to learn about get. that. Oh, I, I he didn't, is haven't followed the that. one. First possible Gen Zer on the Democratic side. Period. If he wins this in election. Florida. Really? Florida. The home of Governor DeSantis. We might pick up a progressive in, in Florida. Watch Yvette out. Yvette Simpson, Christopher Scott. Yvette is a president of Democracy for America. And you're going to have to remind me that you are the chief political officer of Democracy for America. Folks, this has been a pleasure of mine because if, having the two of these guys together at the same time is like yeah. manna from, <laughs> if you're a Christian, <laughs> manna from heaven. Yes. Thank you so kindly, guys. Thanks so Thank much. Thank you. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.